welcome to part three of the radical exponents, rational exponents, and rational. Wow, I can't talk. You get it. <laughs> okay, so let's say that I have a to the m over n power. I know you've never seen that before. You're like, what? Fractions? We love those. No, you don't. I need to change those fractional exponents because we don't like fractions. So why don't we just get rid of them? And we're going to change it into a radical expression, an equivalent radical expression. So that looks like the nth root of a to the m power. So if you find that you have a fraction in your ex as an exponent, you can change it to be a radical expression. So 2 to the 2 thirds power is gonna turn into the cube root of two squared. You see how that little purple three became the index? The denominator of your fraction is always gonna become the index of your radical, okay? Um, the And then in math, if you can go forwards, you can always go backwards, right? So that means if I have the fourth root of eight cubed, I can change that to go ahead and be eight to the three fourths. We already know that first part. Okay, so using our model at the top there, we're gonna change 16 and one fourth to be a radical expression. So remember the denominator of your fraction is gonna become your index. So the fourth root of 16 to the first power. Do I need that one there though? Because 16 to the first power is just what? 16, but just for the sake of this lesson, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. What about eight to the two thirds? Well, again, the denominator is still gonna become your index and I'm gonna leave the squared next to that eight. So I'm gonna have the cube root of eight squared. Let's try some. Okay, negative 32 in parentheses, anytime you have a negative number, you wanna put it in parentheses if you're raising it to a power. Three fifths is my power. So it's gonna be a fifth root of negative 32 cubed. There's two methods to this madness. You can either do radical first and then the exponent, or you can do the exponent first, then the radical. I'm gonna do radical first because off the top of my dome, I know what the fifth root of negative 32 is. I know that the fifth root of negative 32 is negative two. And I'm gonna leave the exponent there. So then we're gonna do exponent second, so negative two cubed equals negative eight. Four to the five halves. The two is gonna become my index because it's the bottom number. So I have a square root of four to the fifth power. Do I need that two? I sure don't because remember when it's a square root, I do not have to write that it's a square root. It's understood if there's no number in there for that index. But I'm gonna baby you for now and leave it. So the fourth root of five. So first I'm gonna do radical first, two to the fifth power. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do exponent second because the square root of four is two, so that's how I got that big blue two at the bottom. And I'm gonna leave the five because I have not done the exponent first. So two to the fifth power equals 32. And that's my final answer. 625 to the three fourths power. I need, my index is gonna be a fourth root, 625 to third. The fourth root of 625 is five. Still with the cube. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do exponent second, and I'm gonna say five cubed equals 125. Voila, beautiful. 64 to the one third. That is just another way to say the cube root of 64. Because the cube root of 64 is four. And anything to the first power is what? Itself, so. 
four is my final answer. So we gotta go backwards now. So let's say I have the radical and then I want to make it into a rational exponent. I'm gonna go ahead and add the 13 is gonna stay my big number and the four is gonna be the numerator and the eight is going to be the denominator. Color coded just for you. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna go ahead and simplify the exponent. So four over eight is otherwise known as one half. Oh, my bad. I feel like I did that too quick. That was your final answer. 13 to the one half power. Um, that's the square root of 13, but that doesn't have an answer, so I could just leave it like that. The fifth root of three to the 15th power. I'm gonna have 15 over five be my exponent. Remember, the exponent is the numerator, the index is the denominator. Can I simplify 15 over five? Simplify the exponent. 15 over 5 equals 3. And what is 3 cubed, ladies and gentlemen? 27. That's my final answer. Properties of rational exponents. Oh my gosh. You can tell I got lazy because I just copy and pasted <laughs> pictures and stuff. You should have learned about exponent rules, but just glance over this real quick so we can talk about these problems, okay? Just pause the video, let all of that information soak. Checking my time. Soak into your brain, okay? And then we're gonna talk about it. And do some problems together. Okay, simplify. Step number one, add the exponents. I can only add the exponents because the sevens are the same. If it was seven to the seven ninths and six to the 11 ninths, I cannot do what I'm about to do right now. But because those sevens, my base, it's all about that base, okay? Because my bases are the same, then I can add the exponents. So seven ninths plus 11 ninths is gonna give me 18 ninths. Simplify. The exponent, that's step number two. 18 over nine simplified is two. What's seven squared? 49, baby. Look at that big old complicated problem that you started off with. Look what you finished with. I know, won't he do it? Anyway, <laughs> I'm a mess, oh my God. All right, again, I have a 36 and a 36. If I had a 36 and a 32, can't add the exponents, but because the bases all the sa are the same, I could go ahead and do three eighths plus one eight, and that's gonna give me four eighths. We're gonna go ahead and simplify the four eighths. One half. Now, tricky, tricky, hey, 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 wait a minute. If I have a half exponent, a half exponent is the same thing as a square root right? Because remember, when you have a fraction exponent, the denominator becomes your index, so that's the square root, and anything to the first power, the one is your numerator, is your exponent, that's going to go ahead and stay the same. So this is the same thing. A half exponent is a radical. Radical 36. And I bet you know what the answer is. It's six. Good job. Okay, two more slides. Almost done. So let's say I have negative eight to the negative one third power, okay? One of the rules of exponents is that you can't have negative exponents. And I make a negative exponent positive by moving it to the denominator, if it's in the numerator, or vice versa. Ms. Bernard, what you talking about? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. That's what I'm talking about. You see how it was like just a number and the exponent was negative? Now I made it a fraction, put a one on top, 
fraction bar, move that whole expression to the bottom, and now the exponent can become positive. Did the eight turn positive? No, just the exponent. Why am I yelling? Common mistake. Okay, so now that I have gotten the exponent to be positive, I'm gonna change it into a radical. What's the index gonna be? A three. So good, I have a cube root of negative eight to the first power. Anything to the first power is itself. So I don't need that one. What's the cube root of negative eight? You so right. It's negative two. That's my answer. Negative one half is my answer. <laughs> Yay. I know, you're like, wow, this is a lot of information, but here we are. Sheesh. Oh, was that not on the board this whole time? <laughs> Ugh, I'm going crazy. This lesson is long. Anyway. Um, look at this big old problem. Okay, so if I have 16 to the 3 fourths on top and 16 to the 3 fourths on the bottom, what I can do is subtract the exponents. That's one of the rules that you learned by osmosis when you were looking at that table. <laughs> So 3 fourths minus 5 fourths. What's 3 fourths minus 5 fourths? Negative 2 fourths. Still with the 16 because the only reason I can use this and do this is because the 16s are the same number. My base was the same. So now, do I like negative exponents? Sure don't. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I've got to make sure, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I have to simplify the exponent first. My bad. Two-fourths is equal to one-half. Now I need to change the negative to a positive. Boom. You see me? You see me? What is a half exponent? A half exponent is the same thing as what kind of root? It's the same thing as a square root. So that's the same thing. Oh, uh-huh. Made it positive, made it a square root. What's the square root of 16? Well, the square root of 16 is 4, but there's a 1 on top. 4 on the bottom, 1 fourth. I feel like I went too fast with that last one. I'm going to go over it again. We're 13 minutes into this part of the lesson. Let's just do it again. Hey. Hey. Make the negative exponent a positive exponent. Change the one-half exponent to be a square root. Because they're the same thing. One-half exponent is the same thing as a square root. Like one-third exponent is the same thing as a cube root. One-fourth exponent, same thing as a fourth root. Okay, I'm done. Simplify the square root of 16. Four. One over four is your answer. One over four. Ta-da! That concludes this very, very long lesson, this three-part lesson. Oh my gosh. I hope you watched all the videos. I'm breaking it apart so you don't have to do every skill all at the same time. But what am I gonna tell you to do? That's right, take out a separate sheet of paper. Redo these problems without looking. See if you can do them again and get the same answers. Okay? And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!